Number 55. Point charges of 25 microcoulomb and 45 microcoulomb are placed 0.5 meters apart. Letter A, at what point along the line between them is the electric field zero? And then B, what is the electric field halfway between them? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do B first. All right. Uh, reason being is because let's B is a little easier to calculate, in my opinion. And uh, if we can do that one, then the other one we... Meaning we'll understand some of the concepts in B. Yep, let's just get to it. Okay. So for letter B, what is the electric field between them? So we know the distance between these two objects is going to be, as they told us, 0.5 meters. Okay. And they want to know the electric field exactly right here in the middle. So what we need to do first is know the distance between the black charge and this point of interest. What is that distance? Well, that should simply be half, right, of the 0.5 meters. So that'll be 0 0.25 meters. And actually, let me put that in black. So this will be right here, 0 0.25 meters. Okay. And then how about now for the red charge? Well, same thing, basically, right? The distance there is going to be, and as you can see, my I didn't pick the exact halfway point, but that's okay. So that'll be equal to 0 0.25 meters. Now, what does the electric field look like at this particular point produce or what type of electric field is produced at that point by this positive black charge. Remember, the electric field lines emanate away from a positive charge, and therefore if I had to draw the electric field vector at this particular point produced by the black charge, it's going to be a vector pointing to the right. Okay? How about now for this positive charge? Again, it the field lines emanate away from that positive charge, and therefore on this particular point right here, I'm going to have a vector pointing to the left now. Great. Now since electric field is a vector, right, then I simply know that if I summed these two vectors up at this particular point, I can find the net electric field, and that would be the electric field halfway between them, right? So basically all I have to do is take the electric field so I'm going to take to the right is positive, to the left is negative. So the electric field produced by the black charge minus then the electric field produced by the red charge. That will give me the net, okay? That'll give me the net electric field. Okay, easy enough. I'm going to write now just everything in black, all right? So the electric field produced at this point by this charge, we can use the formula over here. E is equal to KQ over R squared, right? So this would be K multiplied by Q sub 1 divided by then R sub 1 squared, right? Minus now K times Q sub 2 divided by R sub 2 squared. That will equal the net external field. Okay, great. So what we can do now is we, we can factor out some common terms if we wanted. Uh, but why don't I'm just going to plug it in and calculate, okay? So 8 point, it's going to be 8.99 times 10 to the 9th multiplied by now Q1, which they said is 25 microcoulombs. You know you need that in coulombs. Divided by then that radius, right? So that's 0.25 now. The radius, remember, is the distance between the charge and the point of interest. And that's squared. And that will then be minus now 8.99 times 10 to the 9th multiplied by then 45 times 10 to the minus sixth, and that will all then be divided by 0 0.25, 0 0.25 squared, okay? And that will then equal the net external electric field. All right, so all we have to do basically now is just simply throw it on into the calculator and calculate, all right? So, so we got 8.99 times 10 to the ninth times 25 times 10 to the minus six divided by 0.25 squared, great. Minus then 8.99 times 10 to the 9th times 45 times 10 to the minus 6th divided by then 0.25 squared. And what do we get? Let's just make sure I plugged in everything right. Yeah, everything looks good. So I think, I think we're going to have a value of about negative 2.88. 2.88 times 10 to the 3, what is that? 3, 6, right? Times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb. And that's going to be the net uh, electric field. Okay. Now, what does the negative sign mean? The negative sign just means that it is pointing in terms of how I organize my picture here. It's pointing to the left, right? So 
the magnitude, don't worry about the sign, that's the case. You know, I mean, it's just simply 2.88 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb, and then I'll say to the left. You might have gotten to the right if your picture was different, okay? Uh, so really, what's important here is the magnitude, because you could have had this flipped. It could have been a vertical problem, right? So that doesn't really matter. But that's letter B. Now, let's think about letter A. So let's take this, let's plug this in here. So letter, letter A. And let's erase some of the stuff we got going on over here. Now, what I have to do here is the same, so I can pick any, any point along this line. Remember, letter A is find the point where the electric field is zero. Do you know the point? No, right? We're being asked to find the point. So you can pick any random point you like. Maybe it'll be here, or maybe the point will be here, or maybe the point will be here, right? Actually, we should anticipate that it will be closer to the uh, left-hand side, right? If this was the halfway point, it should be closer to the left-hand side because this charge is stronger than this one. However, in terms of the picture, since I already have everything drawn in, I'm just going to leave the point here. That does not matter, all right? Because what I'm going to realize is that I don't know the distance, right? So I have to I have to state the distance as an unknown. How am I going to do that? Well, from the black charge to this point, do we actually know the distance where the electric field is zero? No. So what do we call things we don't know? We call them x. Okay? Now let's just leave that alone. And actually from here we should have enough information to calculate. Okay, if then you wanted to say, well, don't I need to know this then distance? Yes, you do. And why don't well, we could just get it out of the way. What's that distance then? Well, you might say, well, it's y. And you could be right. But uh, not that you could be right. I mean, that you, you could write it that way. Sure. Um, however, I would like to get this thing in terms of x. So I realize that the total distance is 0.5. So if I just take 0.5 meters and subtract this piece, then I would get the remaining piece, right? So those are the two expressions. Now we have everything we need. Now remember, everything, what I created over here is still true. That's why I did letter B first, it's a little easier. So basically, the electric field at that particular point that we're trying to find produced by the first charge minus the electric field at that particular point produced by the second charge because the vectors still oppose one another, that hasn't changed, will equal the net external electric field at that point. The difference here is what is the net external or the net electric field at that point. It's zero, right? So we realize that's what they told us. They want us to find the point where the electric field is zero. So that means E1 minus E2 will equal zero. In other words, E1 will equal E2. Oh, that kind of makes sense. Let's expand on these formulas now, just like we did before. Same thing, KQ1 over R1 squared will equal KQ2 over R2 squared. And what do we notice now? The k's go bye-bye. So now I can simplify this a little bit, right? So now it's going to be q1 over r1 squared will equal then q2 over r2 squared. All right? Now all i got to do is plug in the stuff that I know and let's see what we can do. So q1 is going to be 25 times 10 to the minus 6th, all divided by now that particular distance, right? So the distance for r1 is from this point from the charge to this unknown point, the distance is x, according to my picture, so that's x squared. That will now equal 45 times 10 to the minus 6, all divided by now 0 0.5 minus x squared, and great! This is going to work out to be a quadratic, right? Joy. So, I'm going to need some more space, so why don't we move this stuff on out of the way? All right, I'll just move this on up, so that's the answer for letter B. And, uh, yeah, let's erase. So how are you guys doing today? Hopefully you're having a good day. I mean, it can't get any better since we're going to approach a quadratic now, right? This makes for a fantastic day. Okay, so now let's do some, uh, let's do the math. So we have, uh, let, let's just take, so we'll do the 25 times 10 to the minus 6th all over x squared. Let's just foil that thing on the bottom. So it's 45 times 10 to the minus 6, all then divided by... So 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, right? What are we going to get? We're going to get 0 0.25, okay? And then that will then be minus, remember, I'm just foiling this thing, okay? So that's 0 0.5 minus x 
you know, times 0 0.5 minus x. You're just doing, you know, at for, you know, what, what was it? First, fo first, outer, inner, last, or something. I don't even remember. But you know what we're talking about. So this in the middle will then be simply x because it's going to be half and a half, and then plus then x squared. Now let's distribute, or now let's actually cross multiply and then distribute, right? So we're going to cross multiply these terms. So we're going to have then 45 times 10 to the minus sixth x squared will then equal, I'm going to do my distribution. So it's going to be 25, oops, 25 times 10 to the minus six multiplied by 0.25. And here we're going to get 6.25 times 10 to the minus 6 minus then uh, 25 times 10 to the minus 6 x and then plus 25 times 10 to the minus 6 x squared. Okay. Now combine the like terms. I realize that I have a like term, you know, between these two. I realize actually it doesn't even matter. I like to usually work with the positive uh, x squared. So what we can do is we can bring everything on over, all of these on over to the left-hand side, or you can just simply bring this on over to the right-hand side. You just got to work with the negative a. It really doesn't matter. Uh, why don't I, I'm just going to bring it on over to the left. So we're doing 20, right? 25 minus 45 is going to be a negative 20. So we realize that we're going to have negative 20 times 10 to the uh, minus 6 x squared minus 25 times 10 to the minus 6 x plus then 6.25 times 10 to the minus 6 is equal to 0. If you went the other way, you would have had a positive, positive, and negative. Okay? So, either way, doesn't matter. So now we have it in quadratic form. The reason why we did that is so we can clearly see our a, our b, and our c value. Okay? a, b, and c. Now what you can do is take that and plug it on into the quadratic equation. Remember, it's x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Or you can simply program it in your calculator, the quadratic, and then just plug, plug in these beautiful a, b, and c's, and we're done. I'm going to try to make a video on that. And I realize I said that probably in a prior video, and I forgot to do it. So I will try to remember to do it. Don't hold me to it, though. But I will definitely try to remember. So negative 20 times 10 to the minus 6. Okay, that's letter A. Letter B, negative 25 times 10 to the minus 6. And then the C is a positive, 6.25 times 10 to the minus 6. And what do we get? So we get one positive, one negative. What are you going to do with the negative? Disregard it, right? So we get the, we take the positive answer, so it's 0.214-ish, right? And that's going to be in terms of meters. Now, does this answer make sense? Well, that's what X is we found. And if this thing is a half a meter, okay, and I'm saying that this particular point will lie, and I said before intuitively right at the beginning that this point should lie a little closer to the black charge than it does to the red charge, well, that would be the case, right? So from the black charge now, we realize that the value will be, so the x, I'm just going to get rid of that x in the picture. So I realize that the x here is really going to be 0 0.214 approximately. And then this value over here, I got to take 0.5 and subtract that from it, right? So we'll take the 0.5 minus then the 0.213525, whatever that value is. And we're going to get an answer of about, of about 0 0.0.286. So there you go. So that should make now intuitive sense. It is closer to the black charge than the red charge. That's what we said it should be. So at what point along the line? So basically, you know, you can say, uh, you know, to frame the answer, this is the distance, but you might have to give a little more context. You can say, you know, 0.214 meters uh, from or to the right based on my picture, right? From or to the right, to right of black charge or Q1 if you wanted, it doesn't matter. Okay, it's all relative to your picture. But that magnitude should not be relative. The magnitude should be... The magnitude, if you're talking about from the black charge, if you're talking about from the red charge, then obviously it's going to be the 0.286. So, you know, just depends on how you got to frame the answer. Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. I really do hope this helped. Please remember to help us out and subscribe if you can. That would be so great. Hit that like button too and uh, tell some of your classmates. I mean, if you found value from the videos, 
I would hope that maybe some of your classmates might as well. Thank you very much.